Gross, welcome to Passion Time, the show the experts share with us what they're passionate about. And I'm here with someone who's very passionate about art, John Ross Palmer. John Ross Palmer is uh, from Houston, and he uh, is one of the top artists of this century. He created a movement called the Escapism Movement. Correct, yes. I want to escape myself, but first I want to start by asking you, okay. how did you find your passion? The way the passion for me was discovered is my father died suddenly of a heart attack, very unexpected. And I think when we have a loss that's very intense, we go into orbit. I don't think our society talks about death. And so when it happens, you don't know what to do. You don't want to talk about the process of maybe dying to a friend because then they think you're creepy or weird. So right. you don't discuss it. So when it happens to us, it puts us, we go crazy. And so the way I was able to get through that is I decided... I was going to do my art full time. And so that was the starting point, August 1998, that I started painting. And I said, I'm going to do whatever it takes to be a full time artist. So that was the beginning. Did your father support you before he died uh, to be an artist? Well, I had always been an artist as a child. I always knew I was left handed, so I thought that was the reason I was better because everybody else, when they used their left hand, were horrible. All those majority people. Yeah, and so then learning it's muscle tone and you're left handed or right handed. But my elementary school art teacher told me you could never be an artist full time. You only are important when you're dead. So imagine being that young, and so that's implanted in your that's head by message. your mentor, your art teacher, which was, of course, my favorite teacher. So I had always kept the creative part of me alive, but the thought of it ever being a full-time passion I could live off of was dead in my mind until my father died. So um, I think it's very important when we talk to young people about what we say because their heads are different than older people and you could throw them off their path. But it took the tragedy to pull me back in very to the good art. Point. Very good point. Um, let me ask you this. You you said you started nine years, but you, you started being an artist as a, as a child. Always. Drawing, painting. Everything. What was your favorite? Everything. I remember, now this is what's so great about a, a child's mind. Um, I remember I went to my father and I said, I want to borrow a $5 bill. And he's like, borrow? I said, yeah, I'm going to give it back to you. I just want to borrow it. So he gave it to me. In my head, I was going to be able to get ink and create. I didn't know what counterfeiting was. <laughs> wow. But I thought I was a good enough artist. I was going to make a $5 bill and the utotem was going to take it. Oh. But when and then you're, they want to take you to jail. Oh, like yeah, five right. Five-year-old to jail. Now, now the photo <laughs> bill is worth $44,000. Just kidding. But oh, man. I never finished Give it. But <laughs> that's the joy of a child that anything is possible. There was yes. no way I was not yes. going to make that $5 bill perfect. I learned I couldn't, but I didn't learn it until I actually went and did it. How many things do we not even try because we think it's never going to work and you don't even try and never do anything? You didn't even limit yourself. Oh, no way. No way. No way. Okay, but again, that's so, a child's brain that we have to understand don't throw on all these restrictions because then they never get to be creative. And the world, mega business, is all about creativity. Absolutely. It's not the dollars and cents. It's the new idea that becomes the real business success. Very, very good point. We'll talk about business on our next segment. But I wanted to ask you, you chose, okay, 1998, I'm going to focus on art. The first thing you did is I'm going abroad. I'm going to travel. I'm going to see the world, right? Well, um, when I decided to be an artist full time, I remember knowing somehow if you had a backup plan, it would never work. Mm -hmm. So I dropped out of college because okay. I knew that would be a backup plan because I knew the art thing was not just going to be easy breezy. No. And so uh, the first thing I did was made a decision to do the art full time. I was in my small 400 square foot apartment. I got some duct tape on the floor. It was three feet by three feet. And that was my studio. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, if I have a studio like this, I'll have the biggest studio one day. But have that area, the intention, right then. So the studying abroad happened after I had financial success with the art that enabled me to then travel. Because everything I do, um, I've almost been in business 20 years, um, in two years. When I drink coffee, when I drive my van, when I travel, when I buy clothes, it's all money made directly from art. So the traveling I wanted to do, but didn't have the money to do it. And so I didn't have somebody just endowed me money. Everything I've done has been creating art and selling it. So, but I, what I wanted to do when I did travel abroad, I wanted to learn from artists that were doing it full time. Not artists that were philosoph 
be sure. talking about it. Sure. You know, I want people that are really eating off their art. And so those are the artists I wanted to study from from the beginning. Exactly. They're the ones that were successful. For yeah, and not talking about it. If, if, if I want to do it, I want to learn from someone that's doing it. Right. If right, you want right. to be successful in business, you go to the most successful business. You don't go to the guy that's bankrupt, or you right. definitely don't go to your uncle that didn't know anything about it, but exactly. you trust him because you're uncle and you never get anywhere. Right. Yeah. You're right. Now, let's talk about esca escapism, which is your, your art movement. Tell me about that. How did it start, and where is it going? Wow. It's moving fast. I know fast. you want to escape this interview. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, trust me. <laughs> no. Um, so you, how did it get started? Where is it going? Yeah. Um, it started very casually. I just got together with some artists that were in my neighborhood, and we mm -hmm. have coffee once a week and talk about art and what wow. people are doing. When you're an artist, a lot of times you do things on your own, and you have shows, and you know people see the big unveiling. They see the big party, but they don't see you in your, your studio day by day by yourself with the discipline to get it done when you could be doing something else, exactly. easily get distracted. So I think the camaraderie with other artists was important for me at that point and for the other artist. But after time, it just elevated to a place, um, and a lot of input on that side was Ryan, my husband, mm -hmm. to make it more professional, make applications to get in. So now there's a panel of collectors that go through all the applications that are from all over the world and then we, co we select the artist for the program because it's a full year, no cost to them. You pay for everything. Everything. Wow. Oh, yeah, the and art pays for that. Pay My paintings pay for that program. Wow. And yeah. they don't pay you back? No. Well, no. Is that your legacy? I, I, don't, I don't even think that term pay back makes sense to me because there's nothing I'm, you know, they don't owe me anything, you know, except it's to do the best they can and do well with their art. That's your legacy, is it? I thought my yeah, financial planner said you talk about legacy when you're 70, not 41. No. I mean, yeah, no. I, mean, I guess so. I, I guess so. Because you're you're helping other. Artists. Here's a good example. One of the major players in music, Frank Sinatra, without a doubt. Yes. Whenever you right. hear his songs, he's always giving credit to everybody. Yes. You know, the organizer, the composer. All, and I just, it's just, I feel. Similar to that, you know, because I think when you give back and give credit to other people, then you do better. And then always Absolutely. saying you're the deal, you are the best, you know, it's everybody that makes... It's a team. It's a team. Especially They're when you're seeing you creativity. right here and I'm right. the... Right. Look at all these people. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, you can't do it alone. Oh, you can do nothing alone. No. Genius is made when people come together, not by itself. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So where it's going is, I have no clue. I can't even believe what's happened in the last, you know, almost a decade. How many people have you impacted so far? Over 50 of... Graduate from the program. From all over the world? Yeah. Can yeah. you tell me how many countries you're, you're working oh, in? Oh, I have asked Ryan. I don't Ryan. know. Okay. I don't know. It well, just grows well. on itself because it grows from the program, things internationally, but also grows because the international trip every year, I do, mm -hmm. that expands the escapism art movement, just grassroots going out there. And so just magical things happen. Your husband is an art dealer. Oh, well, so, Right. The term we use is it's it's just manager, art dealer, financial, whatever. But yeah, he's just and, and we're we'll talk about in the it. business side of this later. But um, you also have visited countries that I absolutely love that are considered artsy countries: mm -hmm. Italy, Greece, sure, yeah, yeah, Spain. foundation, yeah. Uh -huh. um, what do you think are the most important things you'll learn from these countries and, and, and the fact that, you know, you, I was just in Rome recently, just walking the streets and everything is beautiful. Oh, yeah. Smells it's, are different. It's just, it's Life's everything's different. Everything's beautiful. The food yeah. is beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the street is beautiful. The bathrooms are beautiful. Everything is beautiful. The aesthetics yeah. of these countries is, uh -huh. is different. Absolutely. How did that impact you as an artist? What I think is really magical about travel, which is probably for a lot of people the anxiety about it, but when you stop and think about it, it could be a better thing. But okay, so you're going to Rome, you're boarding your plane, you're in Houston, you sit in your seat, you're already, your anxiety is heightened. You're worried about this gum popping, you're worried about the baby, you're worried about this guy's going to bother me, this guy's going to want to talk to me. What it does is it opens you up to take it in. You smell and notice more because of the anxiety. One time my radio was broken in my car, and I knew it was broken. I took a 30 minute drive. Five times in 30 minutes, I try to turn it back on again. Even though you know it's broken. It, it, how many things in life are you pushing the button and you don't even think about it? You, and that's why life goes by fast because you're in the same routine. 
So there's no punch to make it, you wake up. And so, a lot of people that wake up the wrong way, yeah. by some kind of a, well, my wake up maybe was my father dying. Yeah. Not right or wrong, but just a tragedy. But that's what the importance of traveling is to spread the message of what I'm doing, but also for the art, because it's better when I'm there. Not better than the paintings here, but it's better if I'm painting Rome in Rome than painting Rome in Houston. Since your dad such, had such a great impact in your life as an artist, do you, do you feel his presence when you when you do your work? Um, I, I think I did in the beginning. I don't know if that's just something when somebody passes that you're more aware. Mm -hmm. um, do you think he'd be proud of you? Oh, for sure, absolutely, yeah. What are you most proud of in your work? Like this season, I did a couple paintings um, right before the holidays. Um, but it just it's just so unbelievable what I'm able to do, meaning what I'm able to help people do is somebody had passed away and so I was able to do a painting about the situation and it wasn't, it was about the fun part of their life. Mm -hmm. And um, the mom who, it was her daughter, they had like three or four situations this year that were this magical. The joy, you know, that it's bringing her from making something from nothingness is what I do because I make things from dirt or white, you know, I take it from just nothing, nothingness. Creativity is making nothingness into something. But to help her through the process of her daughter dying tragically. Mm -hmm. And so I think what happens when we do lose somebody and we do go crazy and we start crying uncontrollably at times and it comes and goes, I think that's a healing thing because it lets all the anxiety that's built up in your last 40 years out because you're not allowed to ever do it any other time. You're allowed to go crazy when you lose somebody you love. Yeah. Take advantage of it. Get all that junk out of your system. Right. But I told the man when he was going to bring the painting to her, I said, just be ready for her to lose it. Okay. And he's like, whoa. I said, no. If he does, if she does, encourage it. Oh, good. my God. So he's like, she lost it. I'm like, okay. It was a good piece of art then. All right. John Ross Palmer, thank you so much for joining oh. us on Passion Time. He's one of the greatest artists of our times. So I like that um, term. Nice. Check this website. And you're going to give me your website. JohnPalmerArt.com. Check it out. Bobby, you're the most handsome ever. Cambia tu vida, con fe y esperanza, las puertas...